What's up everybody and welcome to episode two of our Christmas in Germany series. If you're new to the channel, then I'm Hannah and that's Trey. And our YouTube channel is called Probably Lost. We've spent all of 2022 exploring as much of Europe as we possibly could and we're ending it here in Germany for a Christmas series. If you saw our last episode, then you saw some of the best Christmas markets in Hamburg. And this episode is all about Germany's capital city. Let's go see some of the best Christmas markets in Berlin. If you're like us, then you love a good theme. We found on the city of Berlin's website a list of the best best Christmas markets throughout the city based on taste. So we are stopping through five different Christmas markets throughout the city of Berlin that will cover just about any style of Christmas market you could ever want. The first Christmas market on the agenda takes place in the old town of Spandau. This is one of the outer boroughs of Berlin and at one point was the largest Christmas market in Berlin. However, walking through, I can kind of tell that it's probably no longer the case. It's been closed for the last two years, so while it's opened up and looking good, it's not 250 stalls to 400 stalls like I'd read online but nonetheless it's still worth it for the traditional atmosphere here in the old town and that's the theme for Spandau in itself it's very traditional I know Trey just said this but it really does have such a nostalgic feel here and I think it's such a special way to start off the night because it's been closed for the past two years and we're really celebrating with everybody here because it's only been open for a few days I do want to say that Santa is supposed to be here because it's Wednesday and it looks like we might have beat him here but it's still great to be here nonetheless. So every once in a while you'll find a Christmas market that's not free to enter. However, I think this one's gonna be worth the price of admission. What an entrance. There's people with fire outside. I'm scared. This is amazing and I feel like we kind of have it all to ourselves. This might be a pro tip. Come on a weekday early in the season because you will have the full place to yourself. We've made the short walk in Spandau from the old town to the Citadel and the fee to get in is three euros and 50 cents each. But as you can see from the entrance, I kind of feel like if the money's going to those guys standing there in costume to give off this medieval vibe, then I'm totally okay paying it. So it's probably obvious by now, but the theme of this particular Christmas market stop is historic. The Citadel is one of the best preserved Renaissance fortresses here in Northern Europe and it provides a real fairy tale backdrop. I almost want to go like with them. Dance. <laughs> There's an ice skating rink. I'm not totally sure that's ice. I'm pretty we sure might <laughs> we might have to pass on this one. It's so cute. It's with the fun, three euro, yeah. How's your wine? How's your glue vine? It's very good. This mug is warming up my hands perfectly because my hands are the only thing that has been getting cold. My hands and my face. We still got three more really cool places to show you tonight, and I'm pretty sure they're gonna have great glue vine too. Behind the scenes of what this night is, the good thing about Berlin is there's a lot of markets, a lot of beautiful markets. Bad part about Berlin is they're really spread out, so you have to take a lot of public transportation. Good news is we made it to the second stop. Bad news is we have three stops in total. This next market is gonna be the one that's most different from the other ones we visited tonight. Every other market on the itinerary is mostly German themed. This one is Scandinavian themed. We're at the Lucia Christmas Market at Kulturbrohai. I think that's how you say it. In any case, this market's entirely dedicated to Nordic folklore. We're here specifically for two things, Swedish Gleeg and elk meatballs. I have no idea what the Gleeg is, but I think it's a drink. Oh, okay, okay. You want to do that? Yes, I'll do that. Yes. yes, you have to do it. So he said that you have to put, I think it's cranberries and also shaved almonds in it, and then you pluck them out and eat them. Not bad. Okay. Take okay. a sip. Not bad. It has a very different taste from blue vine. Huh. It's very strong. I don't even know how to describe it. Trey, you try. What is that taste? It's like chocolate. I didn't notice any chocolate until you said that. Honestly, it's really hard for me to taste anything outside of these almond shavings right now. It's good. I definitely don't dislike it. All right, I'm going to go try and hunt down some elk meatballs. Okay. Let's do it. I'll hold down the fort with hold the down bleed. The so far, the hunt has been uh, not fruitful, uh, but we're going to keep trying. It was a fail. 
So I was able to find the Gleeg, which is what we're consuming now, but I couldn't find the Elk Meatballs, but that's okay because we have two more stops, uh, one of which is known for Currywurst, but we might get some Bratwurst at the next one. It's just a lot of worse, but in a good way. Not like in English where it's like bad. Worst in German is in like meat. I'm pretty neutral when it comes to reviewing food and drinks. And this has wine in it, so it really can't be that bad, but this is not my favorite. I would definitely prefer the glue vine. I like but it. I just I just felt in the spirit of full disclosure I should be honest with you guys. Maybe that's the wine talking, let's go. It's very rare that we find something that I like that Hannah doesn't like, so this is kind of a uh, We're documenting it. It's kind of I'm documenting this for sure. I told the guy I liked it, and I kind of feel bad about it, but how could I say that I didn't like it? He was so nice. One final thing before we leave the Lucia market is that there are these really cool things to help keep you warm. You've got like these wood smokestack uh, fireplaces, but there's also like these open air heated jackets. Since he has a big jacket, I'm gonna use it. <laughs> is it warm? Yes. <gasps> oh, it's heating my bum too? Wow. This is nice. I'm not leaving. As well as these uh, heated yurts. We're now at Charlottenburg Palace, and if there's one way to describe this, it's, it's majestic. The Christmas market at Charlottenburg Palace has the palace in its backdrop, which gives off this crazy regal feel that I'm pretty sure we're not going to get anywhere else in Berlin. We're taking both of these mugs, I don't know. We might not get our deposit back. These are real so cute. This Christmas market has about 250 stalls for you to get your food, your drinks, your Christmas trinkets. This is not our first bratwurst, but it's the first bratwurst that we filmed. And it is, I mean, it's super warm, it's super tasty. That's all I can say about it. It's really good. I think it might be the best one I've had. All right, now we're going to our fifth and final market of the night. <laughs> this is so cool. All right, guys, we made it to our fifth and final stop at a place called Ginderman Market, or Ginderman Mart, I think. Either way, it's actually not at Ginderman Mart right now, it's at Bebelplatz. And it's going to be here from 2022 to 2024 while they're doing some construction. Either way, if you're going to come to a Christmas market in Germany, and specifically in Berlin, this is probably the one that you come to. And that's why we saved the best for last. This market is officially known as Weihachtszaba, which translates to Christmas magic. And it's unquestionably very elegant here. This place has some serious eateries, which we're going to take part in, some arts and crafts, and just various things to buy. It's beautiful here. I really can't get over it. The it's ornaments. The ornaments, the ornaments here are, are so incredible. beautiful. Also, we haven't gotten a mug, so we have to get one here. I'm vlogging it, so we have to get one. Glue vine secured. While this market definitely specializes in Christmas, the festivities don't stop there. There's another big party for New Year's Eve. So if you're here on Christmas Day, just get ready to party all into the new year. Bad news, guys. I can't find currywurst anywhere. So instead, I surprised Trey. <laughs> but you might not like it, I don't know. But I got Spatzel mit Kasse und Speck. Doesn't sound bad. Yeah. Everyone's eating it. It smells so good. Trey, it's like fancy mac and cheese. It's so good. Oh, sounds good to me. Yeah. What? There are onions in this. The crunchy ones. <laughs> it's not my favorite. I need another bite. I can't figure out if I like it or not. Like, it's like dumplings in there. It's pretty solid. Oh! It's pretty solid. Okay, so I got some bread. And I got something called uh, currywurst. So, uh, back secured, I found it, right there and there. Here we are, it uh, smells, like, smells like curry. If you're ever in Berlin at Christmas, then make sure to check out some of these markets. And if we missed any, then please let us know in the comments so that other people who see this video can know so that they can visit them and not be like us. Next up is Dresden and it's episode number three. I feel like these episodes are flying so fast already, but it's been so much fun and we'll see you then. Germany and Christmas. I say that every single time. <laughs> <laughs>